Hi guys, what if you had to do a 500 kilometer journey or 310 miles for you American? Do you do it by bus, by train, by plane, or you drive by car? Now, let's find that out. I decided to take a route that's a bit unusual because I want to cross a border to add some complexity to it. So I have decided to do Montreal to Yonkers, New York, which is right north of New York. So let's do this journey together and let's find out what's the best solution because we also have to consider price, time, luggage, weight, custom, everything else. So let's put all that to the test today. All right, let's go. First, we're going to start by plane. Now, it's going to take you about 20 minutes to get to the airport, a bit more than that. And you have to stay at least two hours waiting for the plane, checking to customs, security and everything. So you cannot just like the rest come in and go. Now, if you take Air Canada, it's going to be right on the other side of the terminal very, very fast. If not, well, you might have to wait and go all the way to the other end of the terminal. Doesn't really matter because, well, you're waiting for your flight, right? So it doesn't matter if you're in the lounge or if you're actually walking in a terminal and shopping or whatever you do in a terminal when you don't go to a lounge, which I don't know because I always go to the lounge. Then after that, the plane's gonna take off. You're not gonna have any meals or anything. The plane ticket is $134 one way from Montreal to New York. Now you're gonna land in JFK if you take an US airline and if you take Air Canada, they have a flight to LaGuardia. So the plane's gonna fly all the way to New York. Once the plane land, you're gonna get out of the terminal directly because you already passed custom in Montreal. Now I check at that price, there is no check-in luggage. All you have the right to bring with you is a carry-on. Now if you're elite with the airline, you're in business class, that's another matter, but this is not that scenario. Now, the thing is, you're going to be landing and it's going to take you a bit of time. Then you're going to find your taxi and from the taxi all the way there it might cost you $100, $120 with the tip. And trust me, if you're in New York, they're going to ask you for a tip before they even start the car and you're going to get to your destination. So that's a scenario that I've done tons of time. It's pretty fast. The only inconvenience that I see with this one, it's going to take you a total of about four and a half hours. So yeah, that might be your fastest way, but it's definitely your most expensive. Now, if you decide to do it by bus, you will go directly to the terminal in Montreal. Uh, I decided to use Greyhound because it's one of the most popular. Then from there, you're going to go to the U.S. border. And this is one of the issues that I found with that route. Now, the price is $83, so it's $30 cheaper than the plane. Now, the advantage with the bus is that you can leave five minutes before the bus start. You don't have to wait there. But you will arrive at custom and custom will take time. This is the issue. Sometimes you may have one person on the bus that's going to delay everybody. It could take to up to an hour there and the total journey is supposed to be nine hours and 30 minutes, but this is to Penn Station downtown in New York. So you're going to have to take the F train to go back up in New York. Now, the issue also here is the fact that if there's anybody that has drug paraphernalia, the customs or something like that, uh, that could delay the entire bus. They can decide to search every single luggage on the bus. And this is a bit of a complication. Uh, the next one we're going to try, it's going to be the train. And you're going to see that this is probably a better option when it comes to anything else. Because landing downtown New York right there and having to take your luggage and bring them all the way to Yonkers might be an issue. And here you will have a check-in luggage that's about 50 pounds. Now, I check with ground. They don't have a scale. They don't really check. So even if it's 70, they're going to ask you to do it by yourself. And that's it. Another option that's pretty good is the train. Now, with the train, you're going to go all the way to Grand Central Station in Montreal, La Gare Centrale, and then after that, you're going to pass custom there, just like you do with the plane. And this is a pretty good option, to be honest with you, because of the fact that you don't have to worry about passing customs when you're going to get to U.S. custom in the Canadian US border. You will already have been pre-checked and you're going to go direct. Another thing that I like, yes, it's 10 hours because there's some stop, but it does stop directly in Yonkers and you don't have to go all the way down to basically New York downtown and come back up north in this scenario. So the train is pretty good for that. They do check the weight if they feel that the luggage is a bit too heavy when they're going to manipulate the luggage and your maximum would be two luggage at 50 pounds. So already it's double the amount that you'd be allowed 
on the bus, which is pretty good as well. You're gonna have the ability to have some food on the train, which is pretty good. And you don't have, again, to go downtown. It's gonna stop directly at Yonkers Station. So I think this is a good option. Now, the price of the train is $61. This is by far the cheapest way I found to travel to New York from Montreal. Now, my favorite one is by far the car. Because you can carry as much as you want inside your car, you can stop whenever you want and you have a car at destination. But you have to maintain you know, yourself awake, you have to drive. There's also the issues of you know, having a car that's good to get all the way there. And on top of that, you know, you're know, you gonna have to refill the gas. It's gonna cost you about $120, $130 worth of gas for one way, which is the price of your plane ticket. So it's actually more expensive than both the bus and the train. But you can be more than one passenger, so if you're not alone, that really helps. Now here, there's a little secret I wanna teach you here if you end up passing the Canadian US border. Now, it doesn't matter where you are in the United States and Canada, when you cross one way or the other, even in Mexico, be the same thing, be the same thing in Europe, between France and Switzerland, there's always multiple borders. There are always one or two big, big one that you have to go there if you're a truck or a bus because they're the only one that can do custom clearance. But if it's not the case, you can literally, if you want to, go to small little custom that nobody goes there. Sometimes they're unmanned, you just go through, or they are, but it's very fast because you're the only car in line. And this is nice. So then the car also the advantage, of course, you can arrive directly at your house without any detour. And this is why I like the car the most. But the second one, definitely the train, which surprised me. It's longer as far as time, but 61 bucks to get directly to your destination is pretty cheap. So guys, I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. In the next video, I'm going to start my series on how to cross border without being stopped. See you in the next video.